Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a weekly television show called Team Chicago Channel. My website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. We're in St. Anne, Missouri, which is just northwest of downtown St. Louis, Missouri. We're at Donaldson Cycle, and in the next 10 or 12 minutes, I'm going to talk to some of the racers from the 70s, the flat track scene from the 1970s into the 80s, when I got involved with motorcycle racing, the greatest era of motorcycle racing in the entire history of the world. And we're here celebrating the life of Neil King, who was my dear friend, and this was the shop that he worked out of. And uh, his dear wife has uh, had this annual get together, and we're going to continue to celebrate Neil King's birthday, I hope, in January every year. So, in the next 10 or 12 minutes, we're going to show, talk to some of the people that are here, and remember my website that's teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv. We are at Donaldson Cycle in St. Ann, Missouri, one of the largest motorcycle dealerships in the Midwest, and maybe the largest dealer in the St. Louis region. They carry Yamaha, Triumph, Ducati, and Honda. Bikes from Italy, bikes from Great Britain, and bikes from Japan. Street bikes, off-road bikes, quads, side-by-sides, they have a huge parts department with great service, a great service department, a great place to stop. If you're looking for motorcycles in the St. Louis areas throughout the Midwest, to serve as the headquarters for Neil King's products. Neil King was a great short track racer. My late great friend was also the track champion at Santa Fe Speedway. And we get to talk to his friend, Darrell Hurst. Daryl Hurst, national number 34, short tracker, entrepreneur, something or another, and a good friend of Neil King's. Neil and me were good friends, and uh, I'd come to St. Louis and Brown Road when they lived there and, and stay at his house and much, sleep in my truck and help him with parts and stuff at his shop. So we've been friends since, since back in the probably six, early 60s or mid-60s. My claim to fame was Astrodome 1975. It was everything just went peachy that day. I didn't ever have one problem. Had second fastest qualifying time, won the heat race, and won the main event. So I guess that was my claim to fame. And you know, like I say, Neil was a was such an intelligent guy. Probably should have been a doctor because he could, he could, I mean, he read so many books and was so wise and taught Helen so much that I think it was really great the way, the way he raised her. Because Kim was busy working all the time and I think Neil spent most of the time with Helen, you know, during the day, school and back and what have you. That's about all I got. Thank you, Daryl. As we look at the collection of leathers in this great museum, this is the leathers of Dave Aldana, Dave Aldana, could have been number one in 1970. He was the star of the movie on any Sunday. Also, we're looking at Randy Goss Leathers. Randy Goss was national champ in 1980 and 1983. And I had a chance to talk to this grand national champion. My name is Randy Goss. Uh, raced for Harley Davidson, won a championship in 80 and 83. Um, this motorcycle right here is one that I raced at Santa Fe Park. I raced it at uh, Houston Astrodome. Um, and it's it's a two-stroke when they had the two strokes. Um, to keep this bike running, we ended up putting a, uh, a 175 crank pin and a YZ bottom end bearing in this Harley Davidson to keep it running. From that point, I went and my father-in-law, Larry Johnson, said, well, I'll help you build a bike. Were you married by then? Did you yes. marry Vicky by yes. then? Yes, yeah. Okay. He said, I'll help you build a bike. So <clears throat> that's the year we we built a bike in uh, my father-in-law's garage. Um, and that was in Ohio then? Yep. yep. Right. And uh, we bought, so I, I bought my wife a $300 wedding ring, and I bought myself a $1,000 set of cylinder heads from CRX. 
which is one of the best things I ever bought because I made the most money with them cylinder heads I ever did with anything. And uh, we built that bike to help a stormy winter, and we had probably the fastest bike on the circuit that year. We won three nationals. Um, I think we ended up third in points as privateers. Um, I grossed $60,000 in prize money in 1979 as a privateer. And when I got all done and paid my taxes, I had either six or $8,000 in the bank. At the end of 79, Dick O'Brien called me up and he said, hey, I want you to ride for me. Um, he said, I want you to get a flight up here. I want to talk to you. Dick picked me up at the airport and he said, uh, took me back and he said, all right, he said, uh, here's the deal. I'll give you a full ride, mechanic. He said, I'll give you $25,000 salary. You get to keep all the prize money. But with that salary, you got to transport the bikes, buy the fuel, and get your motels. So that's how it started, which doesn't it doesn't sound like a lot, but um, I think at, at Harley-Davidson, I think I would gross around $150,000. With prize money in it. Prize money and winning the championship. That's running in the front. And what year was that? 80. Yeah, it started in 80. So the Honda guys had come in. Remember? Oh, with the new 750. The Honda guys had come in, and they'd gotten really, really really competitive. Right. Ricky and Bubble were over there. Right. And uh, we were kind of, you know, there was no restrictors at that point. So the four valves were hard to beat. So 84, um, was, 84 was my best year as far as getting the most out of myself. Uh, I think, so you think with the Honda in there forced you to even ride? It forced us to raise the bar. Right, and right. Brent and I. So you were down in horsepower. Life. You had to make up and talent. Yeah. We, we had power too. Uh -huh. We had power too, but we raised the bar. So every week, it, it, it raised the bar so high that every week the 750 was close to blowing up. You had, to, you had to be that close to the ragged edge. You so how often did you rebuild these engines? Every race? Every week they had to look, had to look at them. By that point you had to look right, at everything right, every week. Right. Um, I think we won. And who was your mechanic at that Brent time Thompson. from Harley? Brent Thompson. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think we won four races that year and we were leading the points when I broke my leg at San Jose. We were beating Hondas oh, that year. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, ended up third that year without racing the last two races. But that was our best year as a, as a team. Thank you, Randy. As we look at the others of Mike Kidd, Mike Kidd was the Grand National Champion. He raced Triumphs, he raced Hondas, he short tracked on Yamahas. We're also looking at the others of Scotty Parker, multi time Grand National Champion. He has won more national races than any rider alive. Also, we're going to have Jay Springsteen's Leathers, another Grand National Champ. And I had the chance to talk to Brent Thompson, who was the Harley Davidson mechanic for Randy Goss. Eventually, uh, Dick O'Brien teamed Randy and I up to work together on the dirt track team. And this was uh, after Randy's uh, 1979 season. He had a really good year that year. So Dick brought him on board. And what was customary of Dick O'Brien is he would kind of match his, his riders with the mechanic that was available at that time. And I happened to be available. Asked me if I wanted to do it. I said, yep. Randy came in. We got together. And R Randy was just awesome. But what Randy did is he wanted to know about his bikes. He wanted to know what was inside him, and I think what really helped Randy and I work well together is that we, it was a partnership. We uh, talked a lot about the performance and what we would have to do to make the bike successful, and uh, Randy was always involved in, mechanically in the bike, so we worked on the frames, the chassis. Um, he was very particular about his cam timing, the power band, the carburation, exhaust system. So um, back then, um, we would have the whole shop behind us. Randy and I would coordinate, get everything ready. We'd do all the work, uh, dyno tune, and, and get all the equipment ready. And then with the help of the rest of the shop, and then um, I was responsible for getting it all in one piece ready for um, the racetrack. And then, of course, when the race, races came on that particular day, 
um, they'd usually fly us out to the races and we'd meet with our rider and race with the weekend and then we would fly back home so that's kind of how we work together. Thank you, Brent. And if you want to hear the entire interviews from Randy Goss and Brent Thompson, you can go to YouTube, go to Randy Goss interview Dan Schmidt. As we look at Dick Mann's trials bike, Dick Mann rode trials, he rode motocross, and he was the Grand National Champ twice. The owner of Donaldson is Carl Donaldson, and here is his 1948 125 Harley Davidson. If you look at the 125 two stroke engine in this motorcycle, you will see that it looks very similar to the 125 engine in the DKW motorcycle that Carol purchased from my friend Larry Williamson. Larry Williamson is going to tell us about the DKW 125 two stroke and the comparison between that bike, the Harley Davidson, the BSA, and some other brands that use this basic 125 engine. I, uh, I bought this bike 15 years ago and sold it to Carl about 10 years or five years ago. This bike was designed in 1937 and it was part of the war reparation after World War II. 18 different companies copied this bike, including Yamaha, their first bike, BSA Bantam, CZ, Harley Davidson Hummer. It just goes on and on. It's probably one of the best de designed bikes to ever come out of Germany. When I bought it, I was just fascinated about how close it was to my 48 CZ and the 48 Harley Hummer. Uh, I told Carl about it, and, and he had never seen one, as far as I know, and, and he said, I'd like to see it, and I brought it down here and he bought it. Uh, it was a fun bike. I traded it. I traded for it a Harley Topper with a sidecar. And the guy that I bought it off of brought it back from Germany. And he was the president of the Harley Hummers Club in the United States. And he said when he saw it in Germany, he was just fascinated by it. And that's the reason he bought it. Everything on it looked just like the Harley Hummer except the seat and the fenders. Okay, now, let's explain to the audience that this is a two-stroke 125. So are we saying that Germany was the early leader in two-stroke engineering? Yeah. Germany, Germany was real early in, in two-stroke design. They had a guy that designed the Suzuki racers and all that type of thing. Germany, Germany was real big on it. And this was part of the company that the four companies went in together over in Germany and formed one company, which today is still Audi. Uh, I don't know how many of those companies are still together, but Audi, Audi is the main company there now. Thank you, Larry, for the great information. If you want the complete interview with Larry Williamson and Daryl Hurst, go to NK Interviews, Dan Schmidt, NK Interviews on YouTube. And now we're going to add Kevin Atherton's leathers, and I had a chance to talk to his dad, David. David Atherton, 1971 racing at Auto City Speedway, Flint, Michigan. I ended up getting crashed and broke my arm and knocked out. Next thing I knew, I wake up in the ambulance, and I'm thinking I'm at Santa Fe Speedway, but I was in Michigan. <laughs> and when I woke up and looked up, here's Neil look, appearing in the side of the ambulance, checking on me to see if I was okay. That's I, I have other, you know, other uh, other connections with Neil, but that was one of my favorites. So uh, short trekking, I mean. What, what did you consider Neil going to the races? Did, was he an advisor? Was he? Uh... No, at, at that particular time, Neil was like one of the premier short trackers. He had focused at that time on short tracks. Um, but anyway, he, you know, that was that was his that was his deal, short track racing at that time. Thank you, David. As we look at the statue of Neil King on his BSA Gold Star. For more information on Donaldson Cycle, it's DonaldsonCycle.com. 
They're at 9851 St. Charles Rock Road. Give them a call at 314-427-1204. For more information on Randy Goss, the best contact is Dees Leathers. DeesLeathers.com. On Facebook, it's Dees Leathers. Daryl Hurst at Hurst Supply Company in Texas. Send them an email at Hurst34 at Gmail. Dot com. The Peoria Motorcycle Club, Peoria Motorcycle Club dot net. On Facebook, it's Peoria Motorcycle Club. Don't forget TeamChicago.tv, WalkWithDan.com, and check out my other video clips on YouTube, Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing.